Hello there, this is Janet Balin from Cranbrook Institute of Science from our education staff here, and we're going to talk a little bit about camouflage. So I have a really pretty uh, presentation of some butterflies here, but uh, you may have noticed that you know butterflies have two sides to their wings. They have this side, which is the side that you see when they're flying, and they have another side which for most of them is much more muted colors and tones there. So, uh, hmm, why would this be? Okay. So, butterflies, like I said, have two sides to their wings. When they are resting, they take their wings and they close them behind them like that. So, when they're resting, you see this side of the coloration and the reason for that is camouflage. Nobody wants to be lunch for somebody else, and so at least when you are resting, you want to be able to kind of hide away. So we're going to use some other live bugs here at the Institute, just give some other examples of how to do this. So these are Madagascar hissing cockroaches here. So if you have a look at them, they're going to be living on a forest floor in a kind of a wooded sort of environment like that and you can see here you go then there you go you can see that they would actually camouflage really really well they would just disappear into that leaf litter and it's a good thing because they are a wonderful snack for a very large number of animals all right i'm gonna put these guys back in here so this is a little bit of a test for you let's have a look at this one over here and can you see what lives in this enclosure? Over here, in this part over here, we have a Shaco gold knee tarantula. I am, uh, I take care of all of the bugs here, but I'm not sure that I'm that much of a spider fan. When I have a look at this, it kind of surprises me how well she really blends in with that environment. Um, fortunately, she doesn't live around here because I could see just sitting right down there in the forest, putting my hand out and not even knowing that she was right next to me there. So I'm going to put the top back on for her. Okay. So looking over here, here are some millipedes. We have an adult curled up right over here like this. And Sometimes there's a whole bunch of baby millipedes in here. Have a look and see if we can see anybody, if anybody's out today. They like to bury, oh, there's another one, buried under the bottom. All right, not seeing, not seeing any, oh, there's a little baby one right over there. Okay, so once again, stay in these warmer, hello there. So they are a darker brown, not very interesting at all, but gives them a great way to be able to camouflage down in the ground and in the log pieces and the litter and things like that. Okay, so millipedes curl up like that when they're concerned, so I'm just going to put this one back. Put the cage back together here. So all of the creatures are staying at my house for the duration of the closure, so that's going to be a little bit exciting for them and a little bit exciting for me as well. Moving along over here, so we have, uh, okay, this is an Asian forest scorpion we can see right over here. Okay. Woo, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to disturb you any more than that. So, again, a forest kind of environment. You've got a blackish, brownish kind of, uh, kind of scorpion there. Going to camouflage really well. Okay. And if we have one over here, can we come see for this one? This is a desert hairy scorpion. So this is the largest scorpion that we have in the U.S. So we can see a totally different kind of habitat here. Do we also see a different color? for camouflaging. Well, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, something else that's interesting is that all scorpions have something in their exoskeleton that causes them to fluoresce under a black light. 
So I'm taking just a regular black light flashlight here. And if I hold this over this guy right here, you see he turns a really cool color. And if I take the same flashlight and I hold it over this one, okay, also fluorescing, but I think of this one as being a bit more like a kind of a snot green than a, than a really other kind of color like that. So, all right. Uh, some animals camouflage using their body shape. So here, for example, we have a look at this one, a mounted insect here. Quite often, insects have wings that they can fold away so that they're absolutely invisible. And if you look at this and you think, hmm, if those sets of wings folded away, what does what's left look like to you? What does it remind you of? And this is a stick insect. Of course, thinking if you're a predator, then you are looking for a nice juicy insect to be eating. You're not looking for a dried up stick, so maybe that predator would just go ahead and pass you by. The last creature we're gonna look at here, these are mantises from Asia. Again, always fun with live creatures who may or may not want to cooperate with you. Come on. So this is a ghost mantis from Asia. And the idea with this is they are leaf mimics. So you can see all the extra flanges on the body. Okay? All of these things designed to make it look just like a leaf, a dead leaf. There's even a crest coming out of the top of the head there. And even that is asymmetrical to resemble the stem of a leaf rather than just something that could be a bit more organized like that. So there's another one here. This one is greenish. I'm not gonna take out the other one probably. Okay. And okay, well, come on. We can see in here. Come on. We're coming out, we're coming out, we're coming out. There you go. All right. And so this one, the same kind, see how he is absolutely brown, looking so very much like a crinkled up dead leaf. All right. So everybody, um, I know that we might have some people who are looking for some activities to do at home here. Uh, something that we enjoy doing some time with classes is we have assorted different plastic bugs over here. Okay, be careful not to dump out my mantises here. Okay. <laughs> And brown ones, we've got green ones, we've got all kinds of different things. And sometimes what we're saying to students is, hey, okay, take one of these bugs and look around the room over here and find somewhere that you think that you could camouflage one of these bugs. And uh, perfectly ordinary room here. It's not like we have anything that special here. And it's kind of fun to look for a place where you think that if you were that bug, you'd be able to stay safe. Now, you might have plastic bugs at home, you might not have plastic bugs at home, but you could use just about anything for this. Just take any kind of an object, even a little bit of a piece of paper, and say, all right, where could I put this where it would be safe from predators and harm? So, all right, thank you so much for joining me today. Take care, and uh, uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.